විහාරයට බොහොම සමීප ලෙන්ගතු සියලුම කටයුතුවලදී අපත් සමග වැඩ ඉන්න තවත් හිමිනමක් ලෙච්චුව ධම්ම නිකේතනයේ අධිපති ගෞරවණීය අකුල්ල සමිත හිමියෙනි ඔබට අයි ගෞරවණීය ආරාධනය श्रद्धावंतुनी महाकुमसराज कार्यालय नियोज्य महाकुमसारिस्तुम सुगीश्वर मति तुम संभावनीय मुद्दनी दयाबर दिमाऊपियनी दूदारुनी इट इज अ ग्रेट ऑनर फॉर मी टू बी इन दिस इवनिंग when i was talking in sinhala all the children started to talk so i just changed my language um uh, giving me the opportunity come alone here to be with uh, you all uh, is a great honor for me and i think personally it is also one of the duties i have to come and pay our tribute our gratitude to our venerable naik hamdru many of you have got the opportunity to come here today and to pay your gratitude to our venerable sir some of you have the opportunity to come forward and say a few words all reflected in many ways what our naik hamdru has rendered but it is not the last at least we have reflected some i have been uh, coming quite often to thames buddhist vihara and we have given our blessings and strength every time to continue its great service thames buddhist vihara is one of the very important buddhist places in the, in the united kingdom so you are very fortunate to be part of that temple and it is your duty to keep that uh, temple going progressing from strength to strength we all need blessings to keep that progressing so to have monks that are capable and also kind some people are very skillful very intelligent but they have little heart some people have full of heart lot of humbleness but they are they are not skillful so our bante is kind of hybrid uh, combine of those two together and when it needs to be electrically functioning he was electrically functioning and it needs some kind of fuel to be function then he used that wisdom and skill so therefore it's a very great honor to have that uh, anaika hamdru particularly parents and the elders of here in the community they want them to be well and they are next generation to do better than they are for that they need a good coaching guidance and also directions mahamdrus the venerable sirs gives that guidance for the children sometimes the parents can't do all of this and they need kalyana mitra the virtuous association they are was uh, you know that uh, there are different age reflect different attitudes they are was a young girl 
when she come into age 13 she become little bit of restless and she feel always contradicting with the parents she was not listening to the parents and it went further worst when mother or father say something she burst into anger and she was very aggressive because the parents want them to be better and parents can instantly see sense that whether children are doing right or wrong they always keep nagging or saying things to the children so this girl one day she was uh, in the house and the mother says uh, don't do certain things and she said I'm not going to listen to you I am 13 now I know what to do and she banged the door and went into the room and mother was not happy and she was insisting to change the attitudes and she said no I'm going I'm not going to change anything I'm going to leave you and she left the house and she was wandering in the town it get dark and was very hungry as well and she wanted to eat something there was a lady selling soup and she went there and asked uh, can you have can I have something to eat this elderly lady who was selling the soup looked at this young girl and asked first before she offer anything to it have you got a place to live and this little girl said no I just left the house because I was fed up my parents are always nagging nagging all the time I couldn't stay anymore so this elderly lady said in that case I have a spare room in my house you can come and stay tonight with me she was overwhelmed this young girl was overwhelmed because uh, she didn't have a place to go she can't go home she was a bit disappointed hungry so this lady closed the shop and took the girl to the house and asked her first go and have a shower I will make your nice cup of soup so this lady make a wonderful cup of soup and uh, offered it to her. By holding this cup, she felt so grateful and looked at this elderly lady and said, uh, thank you. So this elderly lady looked very deeply to this uh, young girl and sat next to her and hold very tightly and said my dear I just make you a one cup of soup and you are so grateful you are so thankful but for 13 years your parents has been making number of cup of soups lot of things you were given but you have not been grateful and thankful so this girl took the point understood what this lady wanted to say and say I'm sorry so this lady gave her all the food and took her back to the house and hand her over back to the family and ever since this little girl learned a big lesson became a wonderful person what I wanted to say this you know we can't teach everything at home we can't teach everything in the school we can't teach everything in the temple but wherever we go, we can learn something and that can change our life. So when we are kind of feeling a little bit of beyond our means at the home, when they come to the temple, they learn something. But the most important thing is, when we go to whatever the school or the house or the temple, that has to be a suitable locality. Sudhusu Pradesh Yakwenno. If you have not met the right person, you are in trouble. Just imagine the parents these days, always, how hard they work for the 11 plus exam. They work terribly hard to make their children pass this exam. Isn't it? So, likewise, 
we wanted to find other aspect of our things to get the right approach, right people association, and right things in, in and around our children is a very important thing. So therefore, as I, I heard quite a few things, what Dhammapala Hamtro has been offering around, uh, is been greatly helpful. And therefore, it is a real blessing to have a wonderful monk who has all the academic aspects and also humanity, immense humanity. <coughs> and also life experience. Uh, he has got all life experience through different professions and also traveling into other parts of the world. And I read some books what he has written as well because he was interested about psychology and uh, offering help for mental health problems. I have read some other books as well what other people been written but what Bhante has written is quite practical and it is direct and it reflect what he understand. Particularly, you know, mental health problems, if you have got a wound, you can put plasters and some medication, medicine into that and get it healed. But if it is related to mind and attitudes, you can't do like that. No, you, you need to have certain skill to do that. So whereas when I read that books about meditation and other things in this, what he has written, it was very transparent mind and it is very directly applicable things he was talking about. So that, that makes me happy uh, what he was uh, talking about. And the next thing, you know, it is not only for our community. When I was in uh, last week in my temple, uh, I had a friend, one of the English gentlemen in my area. He was uh, IT engineer and uh, he was depressed for 20 years. He lost everything. You know, this, this could happen to anybody. The humanity, sanity and insanity is a very tiny line that can change in, in a sec, millisecond time. So this gentleman uh, came to us and learned Buddhism, all the gathas, and he was very dedicated. He was very well doing. But I didn't see, her, see him for a while. The last week I heard from him and he said, Bhante, I am in a trouble. I am in the hospital. I tried to do a very aggressive thing, jumping over a bridge and police catch me and put into the mental health ward. And they were asking to do certain things, but I know for sure you are the only one can help me. I said that you have been aggressive and so I have tried to do something which is not suitable. Follow all the procedures. Make them convinced that you are uh, back to normal. Then come back to me, I will help you. So he came after the, all the things with the police and dropped, me, dropped him at the temple and he came through the doors. He was shivering, he was crying and he was hungry, he hasn't eaten anything. It does not mean that he doesn't have anything. You know, when things go wrong in our mind, even if we have certain things, we can't make it use. So I just sat with him a few minutes and uh, do some chanting and bless him and did some meditations, I make him a cup of soup. And he was instantly, within 20 minutes, he was completely a different person. And he's been doing so many things afterward because he's now back to normal. So what I wanted to say that a Buddhist monk is a great blessing to the whole community. You might have about the whole historical message about the Nigrodha Hamdru, he was around age seven, very little monk. And he was, when, when he was traveling on the street, uh, one of the powerful king, Dharmasoka, King Dharmasoka saw him, and uh, he was a very aggressive king. And after seeing this Buddhist monk, his life completely changed. Without him, that king, the Buddhism would not be available to us today. So that king was completely changed by simply having a few minutes association with a very small monk. Just imagine if we had this opportunity of associating such a 
erudite, educated, highly advanced in the spirituality, how much it would have been changed. Many people say in Sri Lanka, Budu Hamuduru Apit Dakin Nati, Banat Dahan Nati, Nivan Dakin Nata Pin Madivin Nati Kira. Namut, um, if we have taken at least handful of something from that, from our Bante, you are very lucky. In this sasana, in this dispensation, there are three important things. One is Pariyati, which is the teachings. Second thing is the practice, experience, pratipati. The other thing is what we accomplish, prativeda. Since pratipati and prativeda always diminish, goes ups and downs. But pariyati, the teaching exists. Teaching is a manual to produce the pratipati, the experiential knowledge, to make us a guide to practice it. Through practice only we can get the right benefit. So the Bhantes, Hamudros are living examples of that Pratipatta. So they don't have to teach something. By being example, it makes a big blessing to the community. So when a monk lived, lives up to that principles, that is itself a huge merit to that monk as well. So therefore, uh, at a time of very needy in this world, particularly in the West, Buddhism is being highly demanding. Even yesterday there was a program, Ruby Wax, one of the comedians, is promoting to meditate for the people. And uh, so in the schools and everywhere, it has been very well adopted. We need very skillful monks. We need people, you know, the Buddhism can change the life and uh, it does not discriminate any religion. So therefore our children need to learn that. And when you are in out there, you can be a great example to your environments. So therefore, be happy for having this opportunity. Particularly I wanted to come here for many reasons. One is my personal respect to him. Um, uh, it is a big part here to say, farewell to our Bhante, he is very lucky to have that. And when he was going up there, in the in Sri Lanka also, they are waiting, you know, a lot of monks are waiting, a lot of families are waiting, temple is waiting. So, here also we are waiting, uh, we are here to offer something for our Venerable Hamdru, so that uh, when they go into that tent, that community also will be benefited. So, I wanted to personally come here to give my farewell to our venerable one. The second thing was, I wanted to say the gratitude as community of monks in the United Kingdom has been benefited from his education, his uh, skills and his expertise. Uh, quite few times he came to my cuttiness and other ceremonies. One, he wanted to quickly go to the London Buddhist Vihara to attend another ceremony. So he fulfilled some kind of duties that a monk should be uh, fulfilled in for the community. There was another occasion he was kind of cutting short my dana to come here by 3 o'clock to attend the Dhamma school. So I wanted to say that he has contributed, sacrificed very thoughtfully. He could have stayed 70 miles away saying, so right, somebody will look after it. But he was thoughtful. That was part of an obligation of a humanity, you know. So therefore, we are very grateful. I wanted to say thank you to him on behalf of the Buddhist monks. I am the secretary, which I do not say many places, of the Sri Lankan Sangha Sabha, um, uh, Venerable Nayakahamdra of London Buddhist Vihara. On behalf of the Sri Lankan Sangha Sabha, I pay my utmost gratitude and uh, say thank you for all the support he has given to bring the other temples together and to do something for this sasana. And also, personally, I would like to pay my personal respect for him as well. So we need some good monks like that and millions of them. So we need to look after the two monks as well and we need someone like those quite often for us to guide us. So therefore, may all the blessings be with him to find the good health, protection, and happiness he deserves in life to serve the community. We are suffering because 
the tanha, the craving and ignorance is there. Many years ago, our Lord Buddha came into samsara while he was having the opportunity to be enlightened. He didn't choose that option. He won't come back and suffer, not because of the ignorance and tanha, but because to help us. You know how much Buddha has contributed out of compassion. He chose to suffer to help us. So like our Bhantes, venerable Hamdros, they can just go into a forest and be like a monk who does not have any interest about the comment. But while have that spiritual advancement, he is spending so much of time coming into the Sutta classes, teaching in the Dhamma school, going to the dhanas, which is very exhausting. You know, you wouldn't believe how we have been exhausted, but try just to look after the community. So therefore, we need to be very grateful and may those blessings have him to be very strong in his health and also in determination to have a wonderful life. So with these notes, I am going to conclude my reflection. Thank you again for giving this opportunity, particularly for the committee and the Venerable Pahalagama Sumaratana Nayak Hamudru for having these establishments for us to meet and continue services for the community. May those blessings be with you all and wish you all Happy New Year and our Nayak Hamudru all the good health and happiness may he attain whatever in way he deserve the supreme bliss of Nibbana. Thank you.